Steve Kerr in 10 minutes. Got questions. Yeah? I don't know if he can answer them. Got some questions. Questions about the deadline? Because that's a Mike Dunleavy thing. Well, uh, and and that's what he would say if we... Actually, I don't even know what he would say. He'd probably just stop talking for like... Questions about Clay? So, Steve, you're going to make a trade? Uh, Steve, do we lose you? Yeah, yeah I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm here. <laughs> I yeah. in stereo. Yeah. <laughs> Give myself a four for my me. <laughs> it was good. Steve, do we lose you? Um, yeah, no. Yeah. You did. Steve, are you benching Clay no, we, to... Uh, I, mean, I, I, I definitely have questions about that. We'll, we'll talk about it here in just a sec. Uh, do you need to get some red and gold and station merch ahead of the big game? Visit BreakingTea.com slash 95.7. That's our merch store, BreakingTea.com slash 95.7. McCaffrey, Purdy, Debo, show-specific merch and more. Go check it out. Look, the word that I would use, and the audio is a little wonky, so we can't play it for you. If you're a big Warrior fan, you probably heard it. If not, you can go find it online. But uh, we'll sort of encapsulate the whole thing for you. Anthony Slater talking to Clay Thompson about not being in the finishing lineup. And Clay is like, yeah, it stinks. Yeah, I'm happy for the young guys. Guy Santos is in the closing lineup for the Warriors. Like, what on God's green earth are we t- are we talking about? But they got a win, and, and and Clay is inconsistent at best, and he is absolutely frustrated, and all that's normal and okay. But the one I struggle with is when Clay looks at Anthony Slater and goes, "Of course, this is hard." I mean. To go from one of the best players to this, that's the tough one, man. Well, that to me is the natural answer. That's that's the good, honest reaction. That's the natural feeling, but it's not the natural answer there, there, for two reasons. For me, two reasons. Number one, what Clay Thompson has struggled with this entire time is A, making it about him. And B, living in the past. Those are the things that I think are the big struggle. Super easy for me to sit here and say. Well, the question was about him. Understood. So I'll forgive the first part of that. Understood. But by the same token, um, when your team has won the basketball game and you have continued to go through stretches where it's one thing to miss shots, it's another to just make horrible decisions. You know, the game last week over the weekend when Clay throws up a brick and then steals the ball and then comes down the other end and a lob to Kaminga is like as obvious as the sun coming up in the morning. And instead he stops and fires another three that barely grazes the rim. You can't do that stuff. No matter what injury you've had, or where you've been, or how much everybody feels for you. Clay Thompson is royalty in this city and never won't be. But the problem with it is, is everybody's sort of waiting for him to emotionally turn the page. It's as if we're all watching reality and Clay won't accept it. That's what's tough. I understand how hard it must be. And everyone's on his side, not calling for him to be traded, benched, or anything else. He's Clay Fripp, Flippin' Thompson. But the bottom line is, at a certain point, reality has got to be accepted. This feels to me, when, when you say that after a win, I mean, to go from the best player to this, it's no different than holding up four fingers at the Phoenix Suns when you're down by 27. It's like, my man, you're right. We know how great you were, and we know how great this run has been, but that's not now. And, and at a certain point, you got to start living now and being angry that then doesn't exist anymore. Well, and I'll respond in terms of Clay. Who are you to decide what now is? Because Clay's had games that have looked like the Clay of old. And so if you're Clay, you're thinking that Clay is just a couple of shots away. And we know that Clay Thompson's a guy who can shoot his way into a Claymaker game. Now, it hasn't been as often as it has been in the past, and I have a back and forth with my friend Billy Domhoff, Billy D. He's a Clay 
apologist through and through, and we've had a full-on back and forth on IG, on text. It's been in person. It's been on the phone. It's been passionate. And last night is a game where you look at it and he goes four of nine, eight points. And, yeah, he was not in the finishing lineup because he shouldn't have been. But from Clay's standpoint, he is not willing to accept what you're putting out there in terms of the reality of now. For Clay, he still thinks that he's capable of being the Clay that he was in the past. And he is capable of that, but how often? It used to be three of every four games. Now it feels like it's one of every four games. And I give Steve Kerr credit for being able to, in times like last night, say, Clay, you're not going to be playing in crunch time because you're not you're not doing it. You're not doing what we need. And you go to Guy Santos, who is playing great. Look, I, I, I have no problem admitting what I, this must sound like. Here, here we are with microphones in front of our face being like, Clay, don't act like that. Like, oh, my God, shut up. I totally get it. If I'm Clay, this kind of stuff would annoy the living hell out of me. But I can also only speak for for me and for us and the fan experience. And I, I, I went off about this six weeks ago on one of our shows. It is wildly uncomfortable to watch how angry Clay seems all the time. Yeah. And that anger... You know, like smart people once said, once upon a time, I remember reading this quote, when you're constantly feeling angry, it is a sign that the world is not open to your energy. If you're constantly feeling angry, it's a sign that the world's not open to your energy. Like in other words, why are you always angry? You're banging your head against the wall because something that you're continually trying to do isn't working. And that's where I feel like we've arrived with Clay. Sure, this sucks. I get it. It really, really sucks that you're not who you used to be. It stinks to high heaven that it went the way that it did. It's not fair that these things happen to your body. It stinks. And there's no way to wiggle your way out of a dynasty in a perfect fashion. That doesn't exist. But the other thing is that life goes on. And, and, and here we are. And there are games on the schedule and, and, and wins to get and all of these things. And, and I, I just think Warrior fans, for the most part, are getting to a spot of where we get pulled in two directions because we love the living hell out of Clay sure. Thompson. But how long do we go on the journey of Clay refinding himself instead of moving on to, can we just play Warrior basketball now? Well, they moved on last night. And I didn't sense that Clay was that angry. He was frustrated. And I think that the message I got from Clay was he understands why they went in a different direction. He's frustrated by it. And, you know, Draymond chirping in from the third row made it seem like maybe Clay was more frustrated than he really was because Draymond was leaping in to defend him with, who gives a blank? I didn't finish game five in the NBA Finals and this and that. It's like, yeah, it's not about then. It's about now. And this happens more often now than ever before with Clay not finishing games. I think Clay is getting to a point where he's resigned to the reality of where his situation is. And I'm sure he's frustrated over the fact that he got a contract offer, reportedly, and he turned it down. And now the offer that he might get in the offseason could be smaller than the offer that he reportedly got a couple of months ago. Last night not, might not be the perfect example, but it's it's exhibit G. Sure. G. He's been frustrated. You know what I mean? And, and by the way, Draymond, who the bleep cares? I got the answer. Clay. That's who. Like the, 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 right, those, Warrior fans the, care. The, but, but these comments didn't blend. Like, Draymond's in the room going, who to believe cares who finishes? And Clay's next sentence is, it totally stinks Yeah, that I'm not finishing. He cares. It's like, that's who cares, Draymond. He does. And, and so that's what I'm getting at. You're looking at this discord. We're watching multiple events go on at one time, which is the big three navigating this constant, like, how are you now? How are you now? Are you okay with this? Are we going to do it that way? Are you okay? And and, and blending it with Warrior basketball, 
which goes on. Yeah. And and yeah. I get it. Fans are like that's the what's the the discomfort of this. And you know, woe is us. I'm not saying that. Don't feel sorry for us, but the discomfort from Warrior fans is that you do you get pulled in two directions. We love Clay Thompson. He's royalty. I want him to be awesome too. But if he's not, then what do you do? Are we still allowed to root for the team to win games and do the right things to win games without having to do like mental health checks on everybody in the locker room after every game? It's just like we won. Is it okay that we won this way? Right. I Like it's just, it's difficult. It's really difficult to, yeah. right now for a Warrior fan to find their lane. That's well, how I feel. And I think a lot of it, Mark, is that Warrior fans, when we talk about the big three and we talk about the end of the big three, we all would assume that the end of the big three would happen at the same time, where all three would be playing at a certain level and then all three would be done at the same time and we could all pivot from there. But that's not the way life works. And maybe this is the end of the, quote, big three when you have Clay Thompson subbed out of the game with 7.19 to go and the Warriors up four and he doesn't return again and the Warriors go on to win and then he has those comments post game. The big three ending will not necessarily happen all at the same time. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union, the smart choice for low auto loan rates and super simple online application process. The other thing that's tucked underneath this, when you mentioned Draymond Green's name, super interesting to dive into the NBA analytics right now. Uh, Since Draymond Green's return, the Warriors are one of the most productive teams in the league. Like, it hasn't perfectly worked in the standings as of yet. Those two one-point losses at home a week and a half ago really stand out as as to what's prevented this from actually being a special run. But by the same token, you can sort of feel something. It's not everything yet, but you can feel a little tremor in the negative system, if you will. Yeah. They look a little bit better. Two and one on this trip. Sure, you lost in overtime when Steph scored 60. That's the kind of stuff that still makes you go, God, are you How? kidding yeah. me? Right, but but here you are, two and one on the trip, and a game in Philly tomorrow night against the Sixers with no Embiid. Yeah, and it feels like Draymond Green unlocks a lot of things, as Steve Kerr has told us many times on this very show. Draymond Green unlocks a lot of players with his basketball IQ, his selflessness, his passing, and his defense. It's tough, man. I don't like. I, I've tried to make this point all year, and I don't think that a lot of Warrior fans want to hear it. But I feel for the night in and night out decisions that Steve Kerr has to make. I really do. Take, for example, what we're looking at from last night. All right, so how do you play tomorrow night? Do you need to do a clay check? No. Do no. you need well, well my point being, do you do you ride with him again? Well, we'll see. And then if the shots are going in, you stick with him. And if you don't, you pull him. And then if that doesn't go right, then Warrior fans are mad. You're supposed to have predicted who was going to make shots in yeah. the fourth quarter. Well, that's his job. It's his job, but it's a little different this year, let's be honest. It's, it's tougher than it's ever been. no idea who's doing what quarter and when. Well, you got Pajemski and Guy Santos in your closing lineup. <laughs> we all saw that back in November. Exactly. Exactly, man. I've been saying it all year. Can we give Steve Kerr a little bit of a nod of like, yo, there's some decisions this year in a game-in and game-out moment that are tougher than normal.